joining us today on the Culture Catch. We're very honored to have Mr. David Lynch. David, welcome. Thanks, Doctor. <laughs> How did you uh, make this movie happen? I know it was not as long as the Eraserhead project, but it was soup to nuts, start to finish, about a three and a half year? Three years. Three years? Laura said three and a half. Oh, wow. Maybe it was. It took her that half year to get ramp up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, what she said initially, you just started testing her. Was that your way of kind of trying to rope her into the project? Or no, 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 no. <laughs> um, first of all, the way anything happens is with ideas. So um, Laura said, uh, I met her on the street one day, and she said, guess what? I'm your new neighbor, and she had moved into the neighborhood. And she said, we got to do something again sometime, and I said, yeah. I said, maybe I'll, I'll write something for you. And so um, for the next, I don't know, maybe month or something, um, I would write things. And um, I got a, a scene and uh, gave it to her and we shot it. And then I thought that was it, but I kept looking at this this scene, and it held the promise of something more. And then when you kind of focus on a, on a thing, uh, they say uh, where the attention is that becomes lively so when you focus or you put your attention on something it it kind of um, conjures up other things and new ideas come in and so then the first things there you know started other things coming in and one thing leads to another and you're kind of rolling and do you find that, does your TM help in focusing in on it to then expand it outward? Because I, I practice Taoist meditation, and I know oftentimes to empty the mind, things then start popping into the mind that typically you wouldn't even allow into your subconscious, conscious, or unconscious mind. Well, um, you know, um, TM is um, a mental technique that allows a human being to uh, dive within and transcend. Transcend means to experience uh, modern science's unified field, uh, the Tao, uh, the absolute, pure bliss consciousness, and that experience affects all avenues of life in a positive way. And this helps the artist so much, happiness, in the doing goes more and more and more energy goes more and more flow of ideas intuition grows beautiful beautiful stuff you know I often felt like you were the metaphysical director uh, in some as in some ways because you allow the audience your audience to each individual in the audience walk away from your movies with their own perception of and their own subjective view on what that experience might have been and to try to limit it by saying it's this you've limited somebody else's uh, exactly right taking the joy away from yeah, them because yeah. they may walk i may walk out of inland empire with a completely different take than richard sure our producer he, and he could say well i felt that this character's motivation was this and sure. this was the theme do you feel that by trying not to define it helps that individual uh, reach that experience absolutely um there's the film and in my book, nothing should be added, nothing should be subtracted. That's, that's it. And it's, and it's a certain way that feels correct for me, hoping it will feel correct to others. And when anything is abstract, um, you get varying interpretations. And uh, it's the way it is. The more concrete it is, the, f the less they vary. And, uh, but cinema is this beautiful language that can show abstractions. Mm. So I love stories that have got a narrative, they've got a surface, but they've got this areas where are more abstract. And, um, and there, you know, it, 
anyone's interpretation is valid. It's, and it's, um, um, like I say, the frames of the film are the same. The same number, same sequence, everything the same, but every screening is subtly different because of the viewers. Very good answer. Very. When did, at, at what stage in your career as a filmmaker, because I know that you were into the arts before you got into film, what was it that drew you to film then as someone who was an abstract artist? Well, I wasn't always abstract, but um, I was in a studio one day. Um, I painted it, uh, a place I lived, but I, I was, and for some reason, at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts uh, in a big room in a, my little cubicle. Um, I've told this story a bunch of times, sorry, but. Um, That's all right. Uh, and I was at about 3.30 in the afternoon. I was painting a picture of a garden at night, mostly black, some little bits of green kind of eking out from this black. Suddenly I hear a wind and the thing starts moving. And I thought, well, um, I would like to do a, um, moving paintings. And that led to um, stop motion, the idea of stop motion. Now, you, you touched on something that I think is very important that I pick up in your movies, and that's sound and the use of sound. And you, your sound designs are as, as integral to the experience as the visual, the audio component. Was that something that always was part of your, your world, the sound yes. and the sound designs? And sound and picture moving together in time. It's a beautiful thing. And we call that what? Cinema. <laughs> Cinema. Or the internet in, in these it's days. It's all kinds of things. Motion yeah. pictures. Yeah. Um, now, the thing is that um, sound and picture always is going together, but the possibilities are there for um, some, uh, some real, real uh, beautiful abstractions in that language. Do you ever think of the sound before you think of the picture? The sometimes. Picture? Sometimes you get a, um, uh, a sound or a piece of music up front. Sometimes ideas come out of music. And um, when that happens up front, many times I'll play a piece of music while I'm shooting. Uh, they, uh, nobody else hears it. Maybe the uh, operator of the camera hears it and I hear it, and the dialogue, you know, coming through with it, as an indication, um, uh, an aid to um, make sure the pacing is right and the, and the thing feels correct. The music sort of, you know, when it's flowing with the music, it, it's, it's right there. The music should marry to the visual and enhance it. It, and, and if it's if it's not marrying, music can actually hurt a, a, a film. You, we all know that there's films that, where the music it would be better to have no music than the wrong music. It's it's a, it's a feeling, hmm. and when it's wrong, you can feel it, and when it's right, you can feel it. Right. And and it's like no matter how much you love that song, it's not working there, and you've got to take it out and find the thing that works. Right, but did that just come to you, that Nina Simone song? Yes. That's fantastic. There seems to be always this wind sound. I don't know if that's the right I term. I like a wind. Yeah, is that the correct term? It, there well, there's sometimes sound. wind, yeah. No, that sound in eraser head, it's like a whoosh or a wind. It could well, be. there's many, many sounds in eraser head. Yeah. Um, I love, uh, eraser head is, um, it takes place um, in my mind in an industrial, um, um, industrial neighborhood and kind of born out of uh, my experience in Philadelphia and so that whole world conjures up many different sounds and you know so each each idea uh, you get you get um, you get the indications of sounds um, real specific sounds and then abstract sounds approaching music and musicals and so um, It's again driven by the idea Are there any new musical collaborators that you're nurturing right now that? Um, no, 
My friend Dave Jariki died. I would have loved to, you know, work with him again in the studio. And, um, but I started singing myself now. So um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, you know, the, the beauty of the internet and having your own space is it allows, you're so free, you're not encumbered by marketing guys saying you can and can't do that. You're right. your own Well, you're never encumbered by marketing guys, no matter what. Good. So um, we all have freedom. And we all uh, have the ability to catch ideas and, and do things. And the internet now is a home for, you know, for us. When, you're, when, you were, when I was watching Inland Empire, one of the things I noticed was it would, it would be the perfect cinematic moment for the iPod because there were so many close-ups, everything was shot very tight. And you know, if you're looking at an iPod video, iPod screen that's two and a half inches long, I thought, wow, this is the first movie that could really impact this medium. And everyone's talking about really wide when you're in tight. We shoot a lot of our interviews very tight that way as well because it's a different screen format. Was, was that just a random act? Am I imagining more? As no, but I, wouldn't, I would hope that they wouldn't see it on the iPod. Well, of course um, not. But I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for, um, and maybe they already have it, where you take your iPod and you put it into a little holder that squirts a beautiful big picture on Well, they the have that, yeah. And, and, and beautiful speakers uh, to the left and the right of that, or even, um, you know, a bunch of speakers. That's right. So you crank that bad boy <laughs> and uh, turn the lights low and go into the world. And um, it's, it's a real unfortunate um, to see a, a thing very small and with bad sound and think that you've Had seen the picture. Yeah, okay. I, that's a very good answer, and I didn't mean to denigrate no, no, the experience cool. at all. It's, um, unfortunately, the world's going that way. Uh, well, we have kids who are just migrating into a world that just, they don't know David Lean movies, mm -hmm. Lawrence of Arabia, and yeah. these huge cinematic movies. Mm -hmm. But when you were shooting the movie, though, using PD-150s, I mean, you were completely taking it into this nanotechnology, this new film experience from the big, huge canisters and everything. What was, what was that like? Was that liberating for you to an extent? Liberation with a capital L. What was the hardest thing to to work in? Was it not having the light that maybe you wanted, or these cameras? Are no, so no, no. You can you can light you can get it just the way you want it, and um, you just can get it that way uh, easier, quicker. Right. And you see what you've got right there. You and if you don't like it, you can fix it. In film. Um, uh, you don't see what you've got till you see the dailies. Now there's tricks and all this kind of stuff um, where you, based on you know more and more experience, you can tell what it's going to look like, but you actually don't see it really until you see it in the dailies. Right. And even then you don't really see it because it might it's a one light daily, so it might be off, it might be too bright, too dark, you know, diff weird color. Um, so here you see exactly what you're going to have, and and you can tweak it and 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 move that little bit and stop. That's it, and you're 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 rolling. It's beautiful. You shot over 200 hours, true? I don't see these kind of things. Or you um, shot yeah, a lot. I I you know you always shoot a lot. And um, it's part of the, the process. Well, maybe not in film. You wouldn't shoot as much as you can well, in video, Yeah, right? but a lot of people shoot a lot. Um, you, um, the reason I shot, um, there's always three cameras going. A lot of times, two of them, you know, were, you know, kind of bogus because I'm always in the way. <laughs> uh, but um, you can really stop worrying about um, the expense of, of film and, um, that's, that's another really freeing aspect. What are you working on next? What's uh, in the pipeline? I'm going to um, try to do a good job distributing Inland Empire, helping to distribute it, um, and um, then i got to catch ideas. Okay. Well, you'll be meditating on that, and I love that. And lastly, I guess we really should talk about Laura's turn. I know you're really pushing hard for her to get the Academy nomination, which I think she's very deserving of. It's a breathtaking performance. Uh, you did, you pulled quite an interesting, I, I don't know, stunt or a way to generate some publicity for it. Could you mind sharing that with us? All I did um, 
is um, go down to Hollywood and La Brea with two signs and a cow. And uh, within uh, an hour or so, there was um, people coming up and we were shaking hands and talking and um, the word went out. And it's for Laura because uh, she gave a great performance, a really, really great performance. And in, in our world today, uh, studios have a patina. Um, big budget, it, it has a patina. Um, it's a false, it's a fool's gold in my book, a fool's gold. But um, it's still working. Um, uh, when you throw money at a thing mm -hmm. and uh, do it a certain way, a traditional way, um, I'm just hoping that through all this, um, the people see, you know, um, what Laura did and um, admit that it's uh, the greatest. Uh, well, I hope they do, and I hope that we can help you in that cause. And, Thanks a million. And, and help you marketing this really, really thought-provoking and amazing gateway. Bless your heart, Buster. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. This is Dusty for the Culture Catch, and we'll see you very soon. <laughs>